It's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Thermaltake TH280 V2 Ultra EX ARGB Sync onto a AM4 or AM5 platform. This is a pretty straightforward thing to do, but we'll go through it, show you all the individual parts and how to assemble it, and this should aid your installation experience. So let's take a look at some of the parts we will be needing. You will be needing this AMD bracket for the pump, this bag of mounting screws for the fans and the radiator, the USB cable, optionally some thermal paste, the MagForce 2.0 connection pad with PWM and ARGB connections, the two AMD mounting brackets, and two of the four spring tension screws. First, we're going to be installing the fans to the radiator. These just lock together magnetically. If you look on the side, you'll see there is a section with pins and also there is a section with pads. The side that we're be needing to connect is the one with pins. So choose whichever rotation you want for the fans, depending on where you would like the cable to be routed to. Next, we're going to take the eight fan mounting screws and put one into each one of the fan mounting holes and then tighten down. The next thing to do is to identify on your motherboard the relevant headers. You may need to wire these up in advance if you don't have a great deal of clearance at the top of your case. So look out for headers marked AIO pump, which is going to be for the pump, and your CPU fan headers. These will be for the two fans. On this particular motherboard, we have two CPU headers. One is gray, one is black, one is CPU, one is CPU optional. And at the very top, you can see there's one clearly marked AIO pump. Fortunately, in this particular motherboard, we do also have an addressable RGB header, which is also at the top. There's actually two on this motherboard next to each other. One is already being populated, so we can use the other one to plug in for the addressable RGB for the fans. Also for this particular AIO cooler, it also requires a USB 2.0 header. Now for us on this motherboard, both of those are at the bottom and you should find similar on your own motherboards as well. It's very rare they're put anywhere else. So we've got two next to each other here at the bottom, as you can see in the middle of the screen. I'll highlight them in red so you can see them clearly. Depending on your case and potentially where your graphics card is, you might want to also pre-wire this ready for installation. In this particular instance, I am going to pre-wire my connections. Obviously, you can do them whenever you choose. In this particular instance, I am actually going to pre-wire some of the connections. So on the left, you can see the one for the magnetic connection and the PWM and ARGB signals. And here on the right is our USB cable. So for this section, I'm going to pass through the magnetic connector from the back of the motherboard into the case. And I'm going to leave this over to the side for connecting later. I'm now going to pass through the PWM and also the ARGB connection and pull those through to give us a little bit of wiggle room. With a little bit of slack on the cable, we can then plug in our addressable RGB header and then we can plug in our CPU fan header. On this board, the CPU fan header is the gray one. Once the cables are connected, you can then go ahead and pull the wiring back out to keep things tidy. So with that done, you can see we've now got our addressable RGB connection connected and also the CPU fan header, leaving the CPU fan optional open and we've now got to connect up the AIO pump. Now again, you don't have to do this beforehand, but I find it a little bit easier if you do it before you put the radiator in because it will give you a little bit more room to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest the radiator on top of the case and then undo the cable from the pump so we can plug that in whilst 
the radiator is not actually installed. Now we can take the PWM from the pump and plug this into the AIO header at the top. Again, you don't need to do this now, but if you've got limited clearance at the top with the radiator installed, it's easier to do it now than try to fiddle around after. Next, we're gonna take our eight radiator mounting screws and attach the radiator to the top of the case. For me, I would put in four screws, one in each corner, and just tighten them up just very loosely so you've still got a little bit of movement. That way you can move the radiator around. This might be helpful, again, in smaller cases, if you need to connect up your wiring to the corner, this is gonna make it easier. You can always slide it back into position when you're happy with the wiring and then attach the other four screws. Whilst we're on this side, we can grab our magnetic connector and attach it to the pogo pins on the side of the fan. Once you've done that, you can then pull any remaining wiring back towards the rear of the case. Now we can tighten up all eight of the screws. Next, we're gonna be looking at preparing our processor and also setting up the actual pump head. So at this point now, you can apply the thermal paste of choice. Whether you wanna use a thermal paste guard, you're more than welcome to. I'll put some links for those in the video description should you want one. They are quite handy, available for both AMD and Intel systems. You can use the included thermal paste which comes with your Thermaltake product or alternatively, use one of your own. It won't avoid the warranty or affect anything and you may potentially get better or worse temperatures depending on the paste you choose. When your thermal paste application is done, yours may look a little something like this. To prepare the pump head, first of all, we're gonna get our AM4 clamp, which is the horseshoe style one, and we're gonna attach the brackets, which go on the side, and they should be going with the bracket more towards the outside, rather than being on the inside, such as that, because that, isn't gonna fit. So make sure that it is round the other way. And it should look a little something like that when it's done. Then you can take the spring loaded screws and attach one on each side and just do them up a couple of turns just so it doesn't fall off whilst you're trying to maneuver it around. Next, we can clip this into the side of the pump. You can take your pump head and if you notice, the tubes are on one side so that is going to be the open side. So grab your clip or retention bracket and there are little slots, like a channel that it runs down and just push it all the way in until you can't push it any further. Also, probably a good idea at this point is to remove the protective film from the bottom of the cold plate. When it comes to actually mounting it onto the motherboard, we can leave the plastic clips, which come included with AM4 and AM5 motherboards and slightly older ones, leave those in place because we're gonna be trying to latch our clips over those very shortly. Something else to bear in mind before we actually attach the pump head to the motherboard is that the USB connection generally should be on the top. You can have it on the bottom or the side should you wish to for AM4, you're limited to either top or bottom. Intel, you can have it on any side. This on the top, I think, makes it easier for cable management and also to hide the USB plug. In order to attach the brackets, just loop them over the bracket at the top there and also on the bottom. And then you can tighten up the screws step by step, a couple of turns each one, and gently increase the mounting pressure as you go. When it's fully tightened, you can then move your tubes out of the way and then also pass the cable for the AIO header back up into the top of the system. When this is installed, it should look a little something like this. Now we can install the USB plug. 
plug the USB cable into the bottom, pass your wires through out the back. Then you can take your USB cable and pass it through the top of your case in towards the location of your AIO. Pull through a little bit of cable to give yourself some slack. Now with our USB connection at the top, we can grab our USB cable and plug it into the top of the LCD display. Once that's done, you can then take some of your additional cable in and pull it back out through the top of your motherboard just to make things look nice and neat. Once that's done, it should look a lot like this. So that is pretty much it for most of you. I think most of you will be pretty much okay from here, but if you want to see how to set up the fans and the AIO pump in the BIOS and also in software, and also how to install the TTRGB software to control the LCD panel, then stick around and we'll be checking that out next. But before that, let's turn it on and make sure it actually works. Looking good so far. Okay, so now we're in the bar, so we're gonna configure the fan settings and the AIO. So head into QFAN control. If your motherboard is different, so this is an ASUS board, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, etc. They all have very similar things to do. So just uh, go into your fan control software and just make sure that your AIO pump is set to PWM mode as this one is here. And you can see at the moment I've got the settings. So it's running relatively fast all the time. So about 75% is the lowest. And then it gradually ramps up as you get up to 70 degrees Celsius for your processor. Now you can configure this however you want to for noise. To be honest with you, the pump in this one is actually so quiet, you could run it at full speed and it's absolutely fine. Uh, you won't actually hear it. Also, the other thing to bear in mind is also your CPU fans, because you've changed those, you're now using the CT140EX ARGBs. You might want to increase these, you might want to leave them as your settings are already. The choice is entirely up to you. In fact, the AIO pump probably running at that speed all the time is may reduce its lifespan. So I'm gonna drop that down just a little bit. Also, what you can do is go into fan control tuning. Uh, your motherboard may have a similar option and that way it will actually detect the highest and lowest revolution points of the fans and or the pump. That is possibly worth doing as well. The choice is yours. So that is how to set up the fans in the BIOS. Just make sure to set to PWM and the appropriate speeds for what you wanna do. When you're done, you can just do save and exit, and then you can go back into Windows. So the next part is to install the software. So just type into your browser, TTRGB or TTRGB Plus. I'll put links in the video description so you can check out directly, but you can go to their website. So then we'll take RGB Plus, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll find the downloads. So TTRGB Plus software, version 2.0, so you can download version two. Once it's finished downloading, you can go to the downloads folder and then extract the file because it is zipped. And then you can run the installer. Click yes to accept the user account control and then click on next. You can read the terms of the agreement. When you're ready, press agree and then install. When that's finished, You'll get this message saying it's completed and if, asking if you want to run TTRGB Plus software. So we want to do that, so we'll click on finish and you'll get a warning about epilepsy. You'll also have options to allow TTRGB Plus to access your network. Uh, I'm gonna let it do this because it does updates. So at this point, you'll probably find that it says that it cannot find a controller. That's because you haven't got an RGB controller installed. That's absolutely fine. So just head over to the lighting tab and then choose your Ultra 2.1 LCD. So this is the control area for your LCD panel. And you've got various options here. So background color, text color, the visual color, and also visual color two. So for the surroundings, etc. So you can customize those however you want to, change brightnesses, all that kind of stuff. But most of you'll be interested in this. So you can choose either the CPU temperature, CPU frequency, loads, all those kinds of things. So you can have a read through there or you can do the carousel, which will go through all of the ones which you choose. So you can choose certain ones to include or certain ones to omit. Any choice is yours, click on apply. And it'll remember your settings. And then it'll cycle through various settings. So CPU load, you can see it changing there. 
in real time, showing you what's going on. GPU temperature, GPU frequency, none, because it's currently not running, not doing anything. GPU load, the liquid temperature, you get the general idea. So it'll go through the various things in the carousel. You will also do window stream, so you can choose a selection of your screen to replicate on here if you wanted to. And also you've got options for things like the weather. So it'll get the local weather. Or alternately, you've also got the clock as well. So the clock's got various different options. So it's a, a rounded font, so it actually suits clocks quite well. And you've got various styles you can choose from. Roman numerals. Also a digital display. I quite like this one with the uh, rolling minutes on the side, so time and date, etc. Pretty handy. Or there's a more digital version. Now, of course, you can also upload things like GIFs. So you go to Upload File. You can then choose various files to upload. Say that one there. Open that one. And click OK. And then Apply. And then you'll have your little rocket man on a ship. Lots of ones you can choose there. Also, if you go over to Thermal Take site, there's also other GIFs and animations which you can download to choose uh, should that suit you. Also in settings, if you go to the Ultra 2.1 LCD, you've got options as your boot animation and also a standby screen. So when the system's not on, you can have something on or if you've got um, a motherboard which keeps your USBs alive and you want your section here to be turned off, then you can just choose that and click apply and then it won't be illuminated when your system is in sleep mode or when the USBs are still on but your system is technically off or standby mode, that sort of thing. Again, you can choose boot animations or you can just choose the defaults. Lots of choices you can make there. Ultimately, it's going to be down to you and having to play around with it. And uh, yeah, hopefully this gives you some ideas of what you can do with your TT RGB. Also, some other notice in the general settings. So if you want TT RGB Plus to run on startup, you can choose to have that on or off. So if you choose that, you can also have it so it starts minimized. So it just is in your taskbar. You can also turn on your location if you want to for the weather section. You can also enable Razer Chroma support. And also if you don't have RGB Tough RAM installed, make sure you click on this one. Otherwise your RAM will do all kinds of weird stuff and it will look very odd. Also you can go into auto update, make sure that is on, the firmware's updated, etc. And you can get the latest versions information all in the application. So yeah, pretty good stuff overall and hopefully this has been helpful. So there you go, there's some cool things you can try to do with your new Thermal Take AIO. Hopefully this video's been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content of this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.